he reminds me of Lil Abner, you know? Just this big, strapping, male hormone, stud muffin, but nice. You know, he was like big and, and nice, and just, uh, I just wanted to climb up his body. There's someone you can trust. Go Greyhound and leave the driving to us. Go Greyhound. You'd see him and go, oh my God. That kind of thing, you know, like you, and it was again, it was that I can't believe that man is gay. What does the winner get? What does the winner want? Guess. It's very powerful, those, that sexual energy is like, whew, you know, it spins the planet. One of the things as a younger gay man that meant a lot to me was someone that could pull it off, that could fake out the casting directors, that could uh, play it in the straight world of theater and television and film. Small load, huh? A uh, year's tail. Maybe we could wash them together. When I was with Tom, I felt like I was six foot two, 205 pounds, and gorgeous and fabulous. Is he attractive? Do you think he is? No more than the rest of my children. The bride's kind of stuck in the 70s, which is, which is where we all really want to be, but we have to move on because we can't live up to the 70s anymore. But what do you mean he's in the 70s? What, what's he pulling off? Oh, it's about wearing tight t-shirts and jeans, jeans and showing your tits and uh, oh, cruising the corners and, you know, and well, walking, that's up much to some, this... walking up to somebody and saying, you want to fuck? And they say, okay and that he was the envy of all he seed, you know, and um, he was the envy of me. Yes, I'm on the A-list. And what is it to be A lot of people, but a lot of people are on the A-list. Mm -hmm. um, there are two things that determine A-list. It's, ha like it's, ha it's having a good physique, having a hard body, and the other is accomplishment. I'm not an A-list gay. Do you think that Tom is an A-list gay? I do. Uh, and why aren't you an A-list gay? I have fat thighs. <laughs> when I started working out seriously, and I had a decent body, and then people realized I had a nice hair chest pattern, that's when I ended up getting on the A-list. I wanted so badly to be a success in that world when I came here that I thought if I could get him interested, then I would be proving to myself that I could be that too. They all like to get fucked. Mm -hmm. Or they at least liked me to be in that role because, you know, me being my size, me being, you know, the bigger guy, uh, they put me in that place. Uh, that's why they went out with me. You know, they saw this big guy and they said, ooh, this guy will dominate me. Um, and you liked that? Well, I liked fucking them. Tom is a trophy. To have bedded him down, he's a trophy. And by the way, Tom knew that. Oh, yeah. In fact, he, he awarded himself to people every now and then and was very aware that he was handing over a trophy. The world I come from, there's been a lot of, like, you know, dueling, dueling penises. What I would do is <laughs> let them fuck me once or twice so that they felt like they were, you know, that it was a mutual sort of thing, and then just wail away on them. It was this whole thing about fucking being this, uh, being this weapon, being this, you know, way of beating up on somebody else. Not necessarily rape, but, uh, you know, her, using, using, the, that's what we're talking about. Do you think that gay men do that? I mean, do you what, think use each other? Use it as a weapon? Oh, I think we all do. Oh, absolutely. You know, there's two different kinds of things. There's, there's, there's just having sex, raw sex, and, you know, and I've done that a lot, and we've had threesomes and foursomes and orgies and... Yada, 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 and, uh, and that's fun, and that's great, and men do that. One of the reasons I want to fuck you is to, to, to dominate you. And by dominating me, what will that get you? It gets a good time. Personally, I must admit, here we go, I 
don't like getting fucked. Would you feel less of a man if you were, if you were constantly getting fucked? Or did you feel like yes. when you got fucked, you did? I would. Yourself? Yeah, I've done that. Sort of stuff. That's when I think I met you. That's when I met you. It's up there. It's very big. It's, it's you know, you turn a corner, you see this thing. It's there. You know, and you can get, you can find friends and say, come, come, look at this. You know, and they'll come and they'll look at it and they'll go, wow. That there's something about a billboard that's probably bigger than, better or bigger than anything else in the business. I remember one specific example when McBride was young and we were very optimistic and he was very excited because he got the campaign for a cigarette, for a print campaign, which would be all over, all over Times Square. And he was really excited. He came running up to my apartment to tell me about it. Mm -hmm. And of course, I was crashing on cocaine at the time. <laughs> so I wasn't in the mood for McBride. I wasn't in the mood for his career. Oh. I wasn't in the mood for anything optimistic. Oh. And he began to tell me about this exciting news about getting his picture on the, mag on the magazines and the billboards all over Times Square. And I let him have it. You call this a career. You think this is good. This is nowhere. This is nothing. You're promoting cigarettes. I think this is baloney. A real actor wouldn't do this. He left quietly. Devastated. Devastated. That was a fun time. I love that one. Was that Winston? Marlboro. I can't believe you got me holding this. <laughs> I never sit around holding this. <laughs> Maybe because his career didn't go the way he wanted it to go, that he didn't get right. the validation from his career. Right. So he got it through people and, and sexuality. Actors go to these auditions, they don't get the job, they immediately want to get laid. And they go out and they, fuck, they, 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 they sleep with whoever they run into. Because it's satisfaction. Well, it's validation. I'm doing the one thing I want to do in my entire life, which is be an actor. <clears throat> I don't want to be anything else. Um, I mean, I, I like being a photographer. I like doing this and that. But uh, I want to act. I want to act on stage. I mean, that's what most matters to me. I mean, I think we all came to uh, acting for the wrong reasons. You know, which is to be, you know, we were, as they say in the play, four dogs on a, on a bone, you know, they're a bunch of unlicked cubs. I think he had a passion for photography. It was his hobby, and the other attraction in his life was his lust for men. And so he married the two together, the hobby and the lust. And it's also like, you know, that lust, he could, like, keep it alive in the photographs. And he would kind of, like catalog his era as a gay man moving through New York in the 80s. His is a personal expose of Tom's lust for men. There was an intimacy to it that you could really see as you've looked through the pictures how he, how he viewed these men. He desired them in a very intimate way. You know, the truth matters. You look awfully yuppie here, or like, gosh, golly gee. You know what I mean? So I think maybe we should go for something that's a little, you know, tougher. I know this sounds really strange. You take your shirt off so I can see what, what we're dealing with. I won't get you. funny, it's like you do have a body like the Diet Coke guy. Yeah. So, yeah, be great. Fine. He freaked. Um, so after doing all that work to show him everything, and, you know, I thought he got the fact I was homosexual. But, you know, he comes over and then he asks me, who's the picture of this guy up here, which is Keith? I said, well, that's my boyfriend. And he, like, just shocked. You know, as soon as he got here, the phone rang. It was the GMHC. It was the people doing, uh, doing the will. And he overheard me say something about the living will. 
and he asked me about it. I said, well, I'm getting my will together. Like, well, why? Why? You know, he's surprised. You know, 41, you getting your will together. And, I, for, you know, I tried to, at every turn, I tried to avoid it, but, you know, I'm not going to lie, so... Um, then it came out that I'm having seizures, and then, you know, why are you having seizures? Well, oh, you know, it just happens to people. Eventually I said, well, you know, uh, I have a brain disease. Oh, brain disease, yeah. What, how long, you know, how is that going? I said, well, am I not going to live long? I said, I'll live long, you know, and then it's like, eventually it came out AIDS. He even thought, standing there, me taking his picture outside, he could get AIDS from me. You know, he was very naive. I think he was just confused. I don't think he was doing anything. He wasn't like being an asshole about it or anything. He was just being scared. It turns out his brother is gay. I asked him, I said, does he look like you? <laughs>
He didn't respond. He didn't come running to my side. I mean, a, a stranger on the street would have had more compassion for me. Bye, Tom. Have fun. Yeah, you're gonna have to probably have a big fight. Oh, God. Oh, it's gonna be all right. Uh, we'll see. And because I've been desperately all my life looking to be loved. David is somebody who was his ex-lover. They were together for 16 years. I think, truthfully, I think he's still in love with him. And uh, he's really happy with me when I uh, uh, do the things that David would do. And, you know, he's really pissed off at me or annoyed when I'm not doing those things. So, uh, I mean, that's it, bottom line. And uh, he's got to learn who I am. And he has to learn how to love me. I would lo still love to have sex with him, absolutely. It would be a nice fantasy come true. But as I said earlier, I don't know, if, you know, it's almost as if it would ruin the fantasy to have it happen because it's so perfectly choreographed in my mind. I don't even see myself in the fantasy. It's just, it's kind of like looking at him. It's very voyeuristic. It's like, like a camera panning up and down his body. You know, we as human beings are meant to mate. And just because I'm homosexual doesn't mean I don't want to mate. There is a group of people that would love to push all the HIV positive people together. And let's them fuck each other to death. And let's, you know, we'll be safe, we'll be the negatives. But isn't that the, the negative people's, you know, responsibility to understand and to empathize so that we don't have to, you know, yet one more time hunker down into one sort of, you know, specific group. It's like, you know, we did that with being homosexual, you know, uh, had to come out, but then, you know, just be with other homosexuals. Now we got to hunker down and, and be with other positive people. My name is Kyler. Hello. I'm, uh, do you play, you play piano? Yeah. You're with God's Love We Deliver? I'm with God's Love We Deliver, and I'm a, I'm a psychic. I don't know what it is except for chocolate pudding with marshmallows. Uh, not, oh, that again. Not one of the better desserts. One of the, uh, the old not, chocolate pudding with the not marshmallow one of the thing. Better. I met you at Uncle Charlie's uh, years ago. Years ago. And we, we got together. I, I recognized your commercial, your, uh, what was it, laundry commercial? Uh -huh. And I've been an actor too. I also know you like sort of from the acting world. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we got together once. I came over and I played a few songs on your piano. I played this uh, this uh, no business like church business song. I was worried worried that it offended you because I think you said you were Catholic. So, oh no, <laughs> nothing offends me. So, so you guys had a date for like one night? Well, I don't know if I call it a date. We got together. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we got together. I uh -huh. know this person too. But I played this song for Tom years ago, which he doesn't remember. Um... <laughs> So how are you feeling? I'm not good. No, the other day you seemed like totally fine, but today you look a little bit less so. Well, well that's a dermatologist. No, I only mean the dermatologist. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, because it's a little. Just your no. I just meant your energy is down. But then, huh, the, the dark of the moon is the lowest energy point of the of the cycle. Just as the full moon is the most intense, the dark of the moon is is uh, the lowest energy ebb. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I've got little. I've got little energy. Uh, even your dog hasn't jumped up on me today. It's nice to see you, Tom. Do you remember who I am yet? Um, I mean, I went by Jim, but now I go by Kyler. I was James Kyler, now I'm Kyler James. I switched my names. Hey, you don't make people like me. I know. I don't know. make people get mad at me because I don't remember their name. I know. Well, I have to say, I get some of that, but not as much. No, no, I get it all the time. Ten times. I, I mean, get it constantly. I met you ten times over 15 years. And you never remembered me once. Did that bother you? <laughs> no, I hated your guts for it. 
What happened to my career? What happened to my career? Are there other things more important than no. your career? No, 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 no. Where's it, babe? I went up to, uh, what was it called? Um, Lentis to show my calves. And they were only, they could only see five people, and I didn't get that job. I'm doing a, a soap opera. Which one? Um, love it. Hope I remember my lines, and I hope I don't have a seizure. <laughs> but now, now, everything will be all right. You'll see. No, I'll say it like, now, now, everything will be all right. You'll see. No. <laughs> or you'll see. No, no! <laughs> I'm gonna cry at that point. I wanna cry. So. No, no. I think you be alright. Feel sick. Yes, and I'm scared I'll have a seizure. Because, you know, when you get under all that pressure, you know, uh, and your heart starts racing, I'm afraid. No, Jeremy, he's not okay. The doctors want to move him to another hospital, a special hospital. Where? Far, far away. Why? They can't do any more for him here. <laughs> Come on, it's time to go. Jeremy, we have to leave now. No way! Come on, they'll take good care of your brother. What do you think of these? Alright. <laughs> My son. Is it your son? Oh. So I've seen them all. Oh, oh yeah. I have to think they're beautiful. Oh. beautiful. Like he's just a kid sort of over there, or very boyish. And then as he goes along, he seems to mellow out, and then he gets older, and, and then he seems to just sort of, I don't know, blossom over there, and then you see his decline when he gets sick, which is, you know. See that one? Which one do you like? Which the one? The one where John decides to spread himself all over John, uh, all over no, Tom's no. jacket. When Tom is putting yeah, the ashes. Yeah, when Tom's doing are the you, ashes, and like he ended, yeah, and he ended up all covered with. Oh, is that what happened? So then I started taking him to parties. As you know, younger gay men, we tend to waste a lot of time. What do we do instead? What do we focus on? We fuck. You know, we, we tend to, uh, you know, waste, you know, spend a lot of time seeing who we can attract and, you know, and how attractive we are to other people and back and forth and that whole bullshit. And that, that's that A-list shit. We are fascinated with our own, you know, you know, what we can get with our, with our, you know, good looks. So what'd you do yesterday, Tom? I, I, I had a seizure. Why? Why? Because... Because I was showing off at the gym, I had a new haircut, I had new contacts, and um, <laughs> so I was pushing at the gym because I wanted to pump up just a little bit more. Cause I know they noticed. Well, let's see. I, what do you mean? Um, nice. Thank you. <laughs> so, you was know, it worth it? Is it worth it? Well, not to pass out. <laughs> and not to have, let everybody at the gym know you, you, you get terminal disease. I wanted to impress them. I wanted to show off. So, it's like if I was doing, normally if I do 70 pound weights, I did 80 pounds. And recently I've, I've kind of gotten off the A-list. And How you know, do you feel about that? Because you've had your It time. does bother me in certain cases because I really like such and so and so person. And, um, I would like to get their attention, but now I can't do it anymore. So is that what being... They look the... right past me, look through me. I've, I've, as a friend of mine in L.A. says, it's, it's, it's becoming invisible. 
in my particular case, with all the uh, stuff that's been going on with you know the seizures and stuff like that, I think that kind of knocked me off there, because you know not only did I have the disease, but I talked about it. You well, know, you still have a great body. Yeah, I have a great body, but now I'm now I'm damaged. I'm damaged goods, and uh, and of course, and also because you know I I'm wrinkled. <laughs> this is cutie. It's just these spots. I don't want to show up with all these spots in my face. Is that why you're stopping? Is that why you're not going to the gym? Yeah. Uh, don't feel it's too hot. But uh, yeah, there's this, this, this hot little number. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one, <laughs> one of those Spanish Smurfs. They're little and they speak Spanish and they all kind of chat together. And uh, this one has tiny little glasses and a shaved head, and uh, he's cut real close, and uh, gorgeous body. You know, you don't know what the face really looks like until the hair grows back in. So, uh, and, and he has a nice, great butt. And he sort of pays attention to me. And the reason he kind of pays attention to me is because he, he, just, he just moved here from San Francisco. So, to him, I'm a new face. See, most of them don't pay attention to me because I'm not a new face. So this guy, man. Um, it's just somebody I've been wanting to meet for a long time. Uh, and uh, dark hair, mustache, that whole bit. But, you know, that kind of rugged barber man look that uh, I love. Which, you know, they're hard to find, you know. And find them trim <laughs> in good shape. You know, you find a rugged Marlboro man, and you know, they got a punch. It was a big dance, and everybody's like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. we're like wrapped around each other, you know, kissing a lot. I mean, that was a lot. And I told him everything I'm going through, and uh, I don't know if he minded, you know, we'll see. I mean, we, we, we just met yesterday, and you know, he's got to go back to Philadelphia. We'll see if he calls when he gets back. Uh, maybe he won't. How do I get out of the darkness? Um... I don't know. One of the signs of the disease is that you get paralyzed on the left side, and my left side's starting to lose strength. I have to get down to Florida. I'm gonna go down, I think, April 10th, take my dog with me. It's hard for me to leave New York. Do you think I'm, you're going down to die? Yeah. I mean, that's what I'd like to get to. What do you want to get to, Nirvana? Exactly. But Nirvana this time will be my mother's uh, condo. How's your relationship with your mother now? Is she... Oh, it's wonderful. Is she... God, it's wonderful. Did you get all the information you wanted on... Uh, What's going to happen? You want the horrors? I mean, I don't want things sugar-coated. There's no sugar-coating for this I thing. I mean, you know, if you were lucky, your plane would fall out of the sky. You'd be the only passenger. <laughs> and it would be over on the way to Sarasota. Right. And if you're unlucky, you'll... I would be enough. But how do you become one... progressively disabled? The left side will go first, then your right, right leg will go, right. and your right arm will go, and you'll have trouble swallowing, you'll have trouble talking, you'll have trouble communicating. Then you'll have trouble breathing, you'll develop pneumonia, and there'll be some infection that takes you. How's the sugar coating? I, I think that the strange thing about this situation, it's so very surreal to have to be put in a position where you're looking someone straight in the face and you're and you're having to prepare to lose them. Hooray for Hollywood! Bum 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 Hollywood! <laughs> <laughs> On the road again. I am finally the star of my own film. I knew I could do it. I knew I could have it. I know. I know. I know. Oh God! I had to die to get here. <laughs> Bye, Jay. Oh, Jay. Hey, fuck up. <laughs> so how long were you down there, Thomas? I was down there for about five days. And you turned around and came all the way back? Brought everything back. Jesus. I'm not trying to uh, 
You just you just felt it wasn't the right thing to do. I just felt you know there's too many you know uncertainties and there's too many walls to hit. My mother um, had concern about me swimming in the swimming pool, afraid that it would spread AIDS. The fear of AIDS, you know, my mother had it. She thought that the community had it. There was no sense for me to stay in that. She f felt it was too overwhelming for her. Then I had to respect that. You know, we have to respect our mothers and our fathers. We love Thomas. Hello, Mother. This leg doesn't move too well. And I certainly barely can move the uh, toes. So we try to get that going. This arm is like dead. Do you think you had a stroke? Yes, it seems like a stroke. I, I don't think it, it might have come out as a stroke. Same, but it's, same it's a result. brain thing. Yeah, it's the same result. It's the same result. It's eating up my brain. You doesn't. It's, you seem in pretty good shape to me, Thomas. Really? I mean, from the last time I saw you. You put that whole thing in your mouth. Mm -hmm. You're going to get choked. I'm. <laughs> it's like Timmy goes. Is he choking you? Uh, no, but anybody. I thought I taught you not to put too much in your mouth when you were little. Mother, I have one hand. That doesn't mean you got one mouth. I, can, I can, can't move that well. well There's one careful. hand, I, you know. I know, but you got to be careful not to put too much food in your mouth. This is the one that I took in New York, Pennsylvania. Oh, shit. Thomas. You better, better be careful. Oh, mother, mother, these are cost of a... This cost about a thousand dollars. Wait. This comes from Walt. There's a naked man. Naked. Naked man. I do that a lot. Naked. Yeah, it's warming, will you? What I needed from her, what I wanted from her, is some nurturing. People have all kinds of reactions to this disease, and uh, you can't go around blaming them and, and being angry at them and, you know, and throwing names at them or stones at them or whatever. Um, that's not the point of this, this, you know, that's not the point of having this disease, <laughs> um, you know. What is the point? Growing. I'm afraid of dying, but I'm not afraid of death. Inhale, when I sit. A reunion. Cry, <laughs> <gasps> family. Uh, T-shirt. Oh, yeah. And the reunion says, "The Fried Family Reunion, August '95." Oh hell yeah. Anyway, everybody was asking about you, Miss Jeff. It was a lot of fun, saw a lot of our cousins, distant cousins. None of the horrors are here. The girls, white water. Hell yeah, take the girls white water rafting. <laughs> it's about how you're raised, really, because I was raised with a lot of love and support. And, uh, and even at the worst of times, I still know that those things still exist. You know, I'm still loved. Do you know your mother? Huh? Do mm -hmm. you know Susie? How much water? Uh, it's so thirsty. Yeah. We've been walking mm -hmm. all over the place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a, a, a bakery out when I just see that I had read about in, in a magazine. Yeah. Uh, my cooking magazine. So we found it. It was a special recipe for sourdough bread. Oh. Well, there you go. Hey, there you go. Skinny mini. Yeah, it looks like a little bit. Skinny. 
but you only had a, mm -hmm. a violet in your head. Just this thing was tossing around. Well, there's three strains of stuff I know about. You really want to know everything. There's alcoholism, there's gayness, and there's colorblindness. Did you have a hard time with Tom being gay? Who had the worst time? Uh, who the... He was gay when he was a little. You did? Yes. How'd you know? He fluttered. <laughs> Did you hear that, Tom? Tommy, don't do that. <laughs> How do you <laughs> flutter? Oh, well, you know, he just did. <laughs> nice. I know, I know what you mean. Please don't do that. Mother, I don't know if you know, but I'm going to... You know, we have one that's gay, too. I know. You see, we got another one that one of my children's gay. Because when my daughter told me just oh, recently, kind of mm -hmm. I mean, it came as no surprise to me, I think. She just wasn't sure, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. she thought it, like, it was a great revelation to me, and it was... It was a non-issue to me. Yeah. You know, so I, it was just about reassuring her of that. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard about the swimming pool. And I don't what know. happened with the swimming pool? Do you know? I don't know why I even got into that. Mm -hmm. now, but it, it was a dreadful feeling that we came down the state. And, but, the, you know, there was... You'd have to understand what kind of a, a condominium group that we have. Mm -hmm. We're all older people, mm -hmm. you know, not very, very conservative. Very conservative. So, and because of this, I said to him, so you know, you yeah, never do that swimming pool, swap, and all you know, the time you ever come down to visit me. Oh, and why? I said to him, that up Tommy, yeah, Tommy, I don't think you should go swimming in this room. You know, he's got active age, and mm -hmm. the, the type of people that are there, and the type of people that, that we had to live with, mm -hmm. with non-understanding people. And Lou Legain, Greg Legain is like Right, you know. Mm -hmm. Tommy said, well, he knew of somebody that had, some community that had completely emptied the swimming pool because somebody that had this gay and the age had been swimming pool. I didn't know anything about that. But it just it didn't seem like a good idea if, you know, I'm going to tell everybody he has AIDS, that, mm -hmm. that he's out there swimming in the swimming pool. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You mm -hmm. know, maybe I'm just the same as everybody else. Right. Well, yeah. I, Michael was furious with me. Mm -hmm. Did you wish for me to stop? Yeah. 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 Can you say no? Yeah. Well, do it. Say no. Just so yeah. I know you can do it. You don't want to say yeah. So yeah. Well, that's. When, 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 when he wants to say no, he just stay quiet. He wouldn't ask you. Uh, well, at least it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yep, that's interesting. Yeah. Those are hiding signals. I was wondering about that way you squeeze hands. You squeeze hands. Well, I haven't got into that kind of communication. That was a nice rosary, Susie. I just yeah, didn't put it together very well. <laughs> I have to go back. Okay. I'm losing it. Don't let somebody else take it away. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you, you know, the, this is one of the better ones that I made in the sense that the beads were in the, I got a <coughs> bead shop. You know, yeah, they, they're okay. ceramic. Of course, we'll go with It's only until we get used to it. You know, having to pick that. i give you another one and place everything. Okay. I got one at uh, St. Patrick. Hmm? Patrick wants to go Seven to St. Patrick's. It's fine. It's just, don't gotta get used to oh, it. the motion. Uh, the first time you'll call. It's at the, uh, the little pearl. More? One right there. Nice. Yeah. More? Yeah. Good? Okay. Yeah. More? Yeah. We love you for being so attentive to us nieces and nephews when others were caught up in adult problems and conversations. We love you for showing how much you always cared about us when others figured we would just know. Bridget prays for you every night, hoping that you will know how much we appreciate and love you. 
all of us kids know in our heart that you're going to a greater and more beautiful place, a place at least with a lower crime rate than New York City has. Ha ha. <laughs> uh, so even though we didn't tell you all the time, we, all, we will always be a place for you in our hearts, souls, and minds. And we'll always remember the fun times we had at family reunions and get-togethers. We loved having our picture taken in the funny way you made us feel like supermodels. But when we look into a camera for the rest of our lives, we will always remember who was behind it. Though I'm going to bed and I wish you a peaceful sleep, even though I have so much to write, but I can't make it all fit on paper or make it sound right. But I hope you get to hear this letter. And we miss you and we love you. Love, Bridget, Andrea, Brittany, and Michael. Get that? Yeah. Yeah. It's the end of the world. You know what I mean? End of uh, this existence. As we know it. As we know it. So we'll move on. It's just all those boys I didn't get. <laughs> still out there. A bunch of them. Still out there. But just can't you focus on all the ones that you did get and be happy with that? Are you serious? Do you focus on that? Yeah. You focus on people you've had and then just n and not worry and say, well, that's, that's enough for me. Mm-hmm. And I... I Oh, but you're not telling that. You, you, you feel you kind of know. What? In a way, don't you? Don't no, you? I haven't. haven't. Who has? Have you? Feel that way? Oh, have you? Well, I'm not, no, I'm not done. No. But thank you. But, but, but. Did you hear me? He said, I'm not done. Exactly. Who's done? Nobody's done. Nobody's done done doing other people. You're not done yet? No, I'm not. You know what I used to do as a kid? What? <laughs> what? Get the, I used to get the TV guy. Uh huh. And I knew all the actors' names that had great bodies that would work off on television. And I went through TV guys and I would mark them all when they would be on. Like William Smith. Woo! What a body! He used to be on the radar. He used to be the Indian. <laughs> I mean, some of these are Mark Ford. Some of these guys are just phenomenal. And uh, I would mark them down, and I'd go and watch them on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be humping the floor. <laughs> <laughs>